Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our expert talk on Formnext TV. In this edition, we will talk about polymer additive manufacturing, and I have three guests with me. One of them present here in the Formnext TV studio, and two of them virtually online. To start with, uh, we welcome Gerrit Lukas of RWTH Aachen University. Welcome. And uh, Guido Frohnhaus of company Arburg uh, in the Black Forest. Welcome to you as well. And here in the studio, Sascha Wenzler, Vice President from Next. Welcome. Hello, Guido. <laughs> the, um, the entire industry, the entire additive manufacturing industry um, is, um, is quite in a process of transition. Is that true, Sasha, for the polymer additive manufacturing as well? Many, many companies coming out of a kind of garage and uh, working as a startup, experiencing a lot, uh, also in the field of R&D with, with additive manufacturing and polymers and the material. Uh, now we see a real shift to serious industrial additive manufacturing. And uh, that's also one of the main and basic principles for Form Next as a trade fair, showing this. And uh, therefore, it's not a 3D printing or a 3D printer show. It's a trade fair about industrial additive manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Garrett, um, from your point of view, from a scientific uh, um, point of view, what are the actual trends in this polymer additive manufacturing industry? What are you dealing with at your university? So for the polymer additive manufacturing, there are many exciting topics right now. It's um, Astonishing how the industry has developed in recent years, and uh, we have numerous topics here in Aachen, but uh, there are numerous other universities all over the world that are dealing with the topic. So it's quite interesting to see where everyone is going. And I think for the Aachen campus, um, one of the most important things uh, would be circular economy, and on the other side, also multi material polymer additive manufacturing. Talking about polymers, talking about plastics industry, Guido, um, you are working for a machine manufacturer, um, Arburg, uh, and you have both. You have the traditional uh, machines that you're offering to the market since uh, decades, uh, producing um, plastic materials uh, on a traditional way, and you also have additive manufacturing machinery in your portfolio. So. Um, which one do you consider as being more exciting at the moment? Do you have a preferred um, a product line? <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite a difficult, difficult question to answer, I think, because I think it's uh, in both areas, there are quite a few very exciting um, topics we can discuss, right? If, you, if we talk about uh, plastic itself, um, there is not one day in our lives where we don't touch and work with plastic. So, no matter if we talk about the medical industry or the car manufacturers um, or packaging, plastic is everywhere. And, and I think uh, um, in the last couple of months, uh, we had quite a few bad press. And uh, with all the technologies we have now on hand, and uh, additive manufacturing is one of them, I think we have a great chance to move plastics in the right, in the right spot. So if we talk about traditional plastic moldings, we can address the um, issues around the CO2 footprint uh, with uh, lightweight construction, for example. Or on the other hand, we look at the additive manufacturing side um, without investing in, in major tools, so uh, saving resources. We can be right on the spot with custom products nearly everywhere in the world. So both sides from, from Arbok's point of view are a quite interesting and promising field for the future. And I will come back to you uh, later on um, with the question regarding the future um, uh, opportunities that both uh, of the technologies are offering. But first of all, I would like to come back, Sasha, to the exhibitors of Form Next. Uh, last year, we went um, through the halls and spoke to many of your exhibitors and asking what are the major advantages of additive manufacturing in the polymer sector. And all of them were saying that we have a new kind of freedom now. We have a possibility to design things that we couldn't have uh, done in the past. 
um, based on traditional tooling uh, preparation and stuff like that. So there is a uh, there is a movement within this industry which is very promising. Is that still going on at the moment? And do you see that in the future as well? Yeah, abso absolutely. When when you take a look uh, at the development, what happened in in the products, what happened in the design of the products, and uh, also what happened in the manufacturing process itself, it's astonishing what what happened the last years. So uh, it's. Uh, important to think about this redesign uh, of the products and about the engineering at the very first beginning. But uh, when you take also at the look, uh, suddenly the, the polymer products coming out of additive machines, they are now uh, colorful in every variety, in every color possible you can think of. They are post-processed, so they uh, change their surface. And all this is done not only by the machine manufacturer themselves, but also by a lot of companies joining the market on the material side, on the pre-processing side and on the post-processing side. So you have for a real industrial approach, uh, you have to look at the whole process. And there is very, very uh, a lot of dynamic in this in this process. A lot of companies coming in, a lot of companies joining, and uh, what you can experience also in in the market and on the show floor, uh, new partners cooperating and pushing the technology forward, and uh, that, that's a big driver. And it's still it's still very vivid when you enter enter the exhibition hall. Mm -hmm. Gerrit, what I find uh, very um, exciting about this additive manufacturing market is that there are companies, um, for example, on the on the hardware side, um, uh, dedicating um, their efforts on both on metal additive manufacturing and uh, polymer. Um, additive manufacturing. That is quite unique to this industry. I, I haven't heard ever about companies dedicating to two materials. Is that something we will more often see in the future? To be honest, I'm not sure if that's, that's going to be the case for a lot of uh, a high number of companies, but uh, for some technologies it does make sense, definitely. If you look at um, a powder bed fusion process, Doing, um, doing it with metal and uh, on the other side with polymers, there are similarities. You have a similar machine set up. Uh, you can reuse different uh, lasers. There are similarities that are creating synergies. That's useful, uh, definitely. Um, but when it comes to, let's say, extrusion processes, that's further away from the regular metal process, I think. And uh, I don't think that we will see uh, any kind of uh, dual strategy in, in that area. Mm -hmm. Guido, what I'm uh, curious about is because you are offering both. You have those um, um, additive manufacturing machines and you have the traditional ones. Um, there are uh, voices in the market saying that the additive manufacturing stuff is more for smaller numbers. This will never be um, a, a true competition to the mass products uh, being uh, produced on, on uh, injection molding machines, for example. But on the other side, there are also voices saying that um, bit by bit, um, the, the market demand is changing towards AM because they are getting individualized uh, products or they're asking for individualized products. So where is the truth? Where do you, the future, are heading to? Well, I think if we talk real mass productions and millions of millions, uh, the same or very similar parts, um, I don't see um, additive manufacturing as a real competition in the near future, right? However, on the other hand, we see in most every industry a demand for more customized products, slight changes in appearance, in, in function, and... Uh, I think we are on a good way that for smaller series, and I'm not talking about prototypes, right? I'm talking about end user products that we will be able, um, and we are in certain areas already, to produce finished products on a additive manufacturing machine. And I think our, our free former, we got multiple examples um, already in the market where we can show that this is working today. Um, you addressed a little bit earlier the, the uh, subject of uh, uh, the park design, right? And 
all good and all evil, no matter if I'm talking about the additive manufacturing side or the classic or the, the, the normal uh, molding side, um, we got great opportunities if we think from this process, not only from the function side, but also from the process side about the part design, right? And if we go along that, that way, I think the uh, additive manufacturing together with, with new opportunities in digitalization will get us closer and closer to a real industrial serious production for smaller and mid-sized volumes also on the uh, additive manufacturing field. Mm -hmm. Sasha, um, there is, for example, in the, in the community of exhibitors of Form Next, there are um, different sizes of companies exhibiting there, but also different kinds of, of, of companies. The traditional ones who have been working with uh, the materials over ages and now are adapting bit by bit to AM. And there are the startups which are exclusively working with AM technology. Um, who will make the race? Who will be the better offer to the market in the long run? Uh, frankly spoken, I think uh, we need both of them and the market needs both of them. You, you have uh, very big advantages when you take a look at startup companies coming freshly in the market, having uh, sometimes real big sums of investment behind them because uh, also the investor side sees a lot of future potential in this technology. And uh, they bring in fresh ideas, new ideas. And uh, finally, they are also good partners for cooperations. And on the other side, you have uh, very large uh, or uh, very large companies, corporate uh, companies. You have companies with a history in a traditional field of manufacturing. And this know-how, how to create real industrial business cases, how to scale uh, production uh, and how to think uh, in, in a production process together with the young and fresh minds having this engineering hunger and also having this spirit and I think that's, that's very important, having this engineering spirit rethinking the products, mm -hmm. bringing this together uh, especially on a show floor at the end, but bringing these people together finally with the industries who are already using additive or who might use it because there is a lot of uh, positive potential for, for a lot of user industries and applications. Bringing this together, that's I think that's the real mix or that's the mix bringing the most positive effects for the technology and out of the technology. Mm -hmm. As promised, I would like to come back to the point uh, where we spoke about a little bit earlier, that was the, the image thing. Uh, because we know in the, in the polymer uh, industry, in the market, um, um, there was some kind of, of plastics bashing. That's how we call it in the media. Um, that was before Corona crisis. Um, so this has changed now because, for example, in the medical, in the health sector, um, those products made of polymer materials are extremely needed at the moment to overcome the crisis, uh, like masks, like um, uh, injectors, like all that stuff we know uh, very much. So the question now is, can additive manufacturing parts even contribute more to this positive image and will it help change the image over a longer period of time, Guido? Yes, uh, for sure it can. I mean, you, you probably are aware on the products we developed in a very, very short period of time during the uh, first Corona uh, crisis, we developed a, a mask um, and the start there was a AM part, right? We, we, had to, we had to come up with a design that fits all different faces. Um, and AM was a perfect tool for us to come up with a, with a solution. And within a six, seven week period of time, we had a production cell on classical production molding, the plastic molding, but the way into it was um, additive manufacturing. So yes, it can contribute in, in many different ways. Garrett, there are even students calling uh, this new technology uh, the sexiest on earth at the moment because you can do miracles with that AM technology. Do you, do you share this opinion? Uh, yes, I do. I think 
additive manufacturing has made a lot of things possible, even in the, in the past uh, few months with an economic uncertainty um, uh, going on. So what I think is most important is that um, we can use additive manufacturing for distributed manufacturing. So we can uh, manufacture parts um, not in big factories, but closer to where we actually need them. And uh, this makes it especially uh, more important in, in such a uh, weird situation we have been with the COVID crisis, um, manufacturing masks or valves um, really close to hospitals that uh, are definitely not products that we can or that someone can sell over years because they are just supports and aids in, in, in times of need. Um, but they're necessary and it's good for the, for the um, technology itself and for the industry because we can show that the technology works and that we can actually uh, deliver what we uh, promise as an industry. Mm -hmm. The rest of the polymer industry, the traditional polymer industry at the moment is very much stressing the point of circular economy as a problem solver of this actual problem that we're having with uh, marine litter, uh, with misused materials or um, thrown into uh, the nature environment, all these things we know from the media. And this is a worldwide problem that the plastics industry is having. At the moment, they are heavily working jointly on an improvement of this situation by means of circular economic approaches. How can AM contribute to a better environmental uh, protection um, in the industries? Yeah, the, the technology itself is quite uh, resource friendly because when you take a look at the additive process you are adding the material you need. So uh, in an idealistic uh, way of uh, looking at this you really just use the material you need for the final product. And you do this uh, with the different materials. So you do this in either in metal or in polymers or in ceramics or in, in, in many more who might, who might come. So the technology itself, itself is quite already orientated towards, towards circular economy. What, what now will happen is that also here more and more players will come in because uh, you need also to reflect this circular economy. You need, let's say, this environment of uh, industrial players in, in these fields. And uh, that's also our job for, for future possibilities at, at Form Next to identify exactly these fields, what is important, what is possible to show, and then to identify the players and either to bring them in at the show floor or maybe to put a spotlight on a special show, for example, uh, as a first step, and to make this also uh, a, a transparent uh, finally to the user of the technology because finally he's the guy or he's the company they are the companies using the production facility and the production process so they are the ones who should also think about uh, the circular uh, economy around this. Mm -hmm. Guido, um, you are working on circular economy uh, solutions um, for quite a while already on the, on the traditional uh, injection molding process. That means you are um, um, uh, trying now to enter more and more recycled materials into a process in order to avoid the usage of new raw materials. Do you think that will soon be possible on additive manufacturing parts as well? Are you, um, are you approaching this as well? Well, that's, that's, uh, there, there are some studies we are conducting right now. Um, I think it, it will be, especially with our processes, since our, our molding process is nearly 100% the same like in a, in a typical molding machine. So yes, I think with our, with our technology, we will be soon be able to, to use also recirculate or regrind material. Mm -hmm. Gareth, what are, you, uh, what are you working on in your laboratories? What will be the future uh, um, of AM materials uh, regarding uh, circular economic approach? Mm, I think we, we currently work on differentiating um, the fields of um, 
uh, fields of uh, knowledge we have to um, create. Uh, to say, uh, to find out what Sasha said, it's uh, really significant that AM is already an efficient, an eco-efficient process uh, where we only use material we actually need um, if you put aside support materials. Um, if you look at support materials, that is one very important topic. Uh, we should work more and we are working more on uh, processes that use less support material and are still delivering um, the, right, uh, the right products at the end. But another point is that we have to look at the whole um, system. So how do we design products and how do we use them and how they're going to recycle back in the circle. So um, additive manufacturing is a good opportunity for everyone to rethink product design also in a circular economy sense. Oh. And I think at the end, we will um, definitely look at the polymer additive manufacturing as a possibility to um, create polymer products that are easier to recycle. And at the end, uh, also delivering more uh, performance to eco-friendly um, uh, machines or other products. My last question goes into the direction of Aachen. So Gerrit, uh, um, um, from a university um, uh, point of view, what are the visions? What are the future possibilities that polymer additive manufacturing technology can offer? On what are you working behind the scenes that nobody knows yet? Unfortunately, I might only can give a glimpse of what we are working on. Ah, oh, come on! But I can share my vision. That's, that's possible. Um, so I think a big impact will have uh, multi-material additive manufacturing for metals, but especially for polymers. I think that's uh, very important to uh, see how many um, functions and products we can create if we are able to create uh, a part that as one material um, a property on the one side and another on the other side, and maybe have a gradient in between them. So we can uh, create things <clears throat> that currently is only uh, uh, working with a multi-component um, injection molding or difficult assembly processes. So I think that will be something that is coming in the next two to five years. Um, that's very important. And beyond that, it's um, the things of um, artificial intelligence that makes the AM process smarter. But that's not only for um, polymer additive manufacturing, of course, it's only for, uh, also for uh, metal additive manufacturing as well. Gerrit Lukas um, at RWTH Aachen um, University, thank you very much for participating in our little talk show here. Uh, Guido Frohnhaus of Arlburg in Losburg in the Black Forest, thank you as well for participating. Hope to see you in person um, uh, very soon again. Uh, and thank you very much, Sascha Wenzler of uh, Form Next, uh, for joining me here in the Form Next TV studio. Thank you for watching. See you next time on Form Next TV.